In Britain, our gardens cover a bigger area than all our national nature reserves put together. Each and every one of them could be potentially its very own wildlife haven. But just how welcoming is your garden? In this series, we'll be transforming gardens across Britain with one purpose in mind, to bring back native wildlife. We are the Wild About Your Garden team. Award-winning garden designer Chris Beardshaw, wildlife specialist Ellie Harrison, and me, Nick Knowles. <laughs> This week we're in Crayford in Kent, home to Betty, a lady whose love of mowing is limiting the wildlife in her garden to plastic animals. Yeah, all the sun's come out for you, look. This is uh, what you would call a little patio. It's rather small, but... Uh, it's very nice, though. ..in a few days, yes. Blimey, look at the size of that water feature. This is the river bank. Wow, look at that. Wow, that's so pretty. So is, is this tidal, or does it does it go up and down, or is, yes. it, is it static? Well, that was a bit unexpected, no, it's wasn't it? static. It's well, I walk into a back garden like this and suddenly find there's a lake in the back. All the more surprising because Betty's neighbourhood is an urban jungle of pylons, traffic and industrial estates. All under a flypath. Wow. We did have a couple uh -huh. of swans, but they disappeared round about Easter. Don't know what happened to them. But it's a great resource to have, isn't it? Because it's, it's really going to bring things in. Absolutely. The problem is what to do with this, really. Or the challenge yeah. is what to do with this. And do you ever get any sort of birds, animals, anything in here? Well, get squirrels. They come along the fence here and pinch the birds' nuts. But uh, apart from that, not really, Nick. Ellie knows why the wildlife's giving Betty the cold shoulder. I mean, there's absolutely nothing here. There's nothing that would thrive here. There's nothing they could eat. There's no reason for them to come onto this concrete space, especially with this solid fence behind, with barely a gap underneath it. It's, it's wildlife dead here, really. How about this? It's a bit of... Um... <laughs> Is this native? Oh, it's a first. It's a first for South East England. <laughs> oh, no, it's plastic. Why have you decided that you want a sort of a more wildlife garden rather than... Well, I think that there's not many... Um much in the way of wildlife about now, is there? Like there used to be somehow. Butterflies, I'd love to see more of them. Because you don't see many at all now, do you, anywhere? You don't Butterflies. seem to. I don't know whether it's just that, looking back, you have a better view of it when you were a kid, but I, I, I remember so. when I was little seeing more butterflies. Mm. And the birds I'd like to see more of. But he's putting out food to try and attract the birds, but there aren't any takers. Talking of food, I'm a bit peckish. Oh, hello. This is a is bit of, of, oh. of favouritism, <laughs> I think, isn't it? No, I was saving <laughs> one of my lovely cups for you, but it was a bit feminine-looking. Was it? Like, all flowers you on think, it. Oh, no, you'll you definitely like this suits me better. Thanks very I much. Um, so. You're right, we're Yeah, I'm great, thanks very much. I know you guys just are busy go. working. Yeah, yeah. And, um, we're full, thanks. Can you have a chance? No, I have two. Yes, Betty's sussed the Knoll's habitat straight away, but she wants birds and butterflies. However, Eddie thinks the river offers a chance to help a far more threatened creature, the water hole. How rare is this as an animal, then? It's been named as Britain's rarest mammal, so much so that this year, in February 2008, they've just started to protect them by law. Um, I think numbers have gone down something like 90% in the last 20 years, an absolute plummet in numbers. What do they feed on? Is there anything we can put on in the garden on this side that might entice them across for a snack? That's a good a question. Snack? Well, it, at this time of the year, what are we in? We're in spring, so they'll eat the buds and shoots and... Um... Hey, I don't want them eating my plants. Oh, really? They're, gonna, they're, gonna eat your they're plants. not going to be welcome if they start eating my plants. <laughs> ah. Wildlife's all very well, but come on. It's a wildlife garden. Of course they're going to eat the plants. That's the whole point. In the past, Britain was home to a far wider variety of wildlife, while boar, wolves and even lynxes roamed the countryside. Today, you need to come to a place like the Wildwood Trust in Kent in order to see them. It's interesting up here. Ellie's brought Betty and two of her grandchildren along to try and sell her on the water vault. Betty, this is Hazel. Oh, hello, Hazel. Hello. And Kira and Macy. And we've, uh, we've come to see your water vault. Wildwood are running a breeding program, releasing water voles back into the wild before they too disappear. It's a water vault. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh. Wow. <laughs> not to touch them. So. What do you think of that, Betty? You still got that reps, don't they? <laughs> no, I'm not that keen. No. There was a famous water vole in the wind in the willows, and he was called Ratty. 
Perhaps yeah. that's why people often confuse the two. With the rat, it's got a pointy face like this one. You see this one's got a little snubby nose. It's all kind of short and stout. And the ears are much bigger and sticking out on the rat. And they're all tucked away there on the water bowl. And the colour's a bit different too. The rat's always lighter. And then the tail is shorter on the water bowl and a bit fluffier. That one's quite scaly, isn't it? And that's how you can tell them apart. Yep, keep going, Ellie. I think she's coming round. The other great thing, Betty, if you're not a big fan of rats, is that the water vole will stay in its territory pretty much and it won't come into your house and into your larder and start eating. So that's a good thing. I like the look of the rat, cos I like his little ears sticking out, but I prefer the water vole. <laughs> it won't be so um, frightening, I don't think. Back in Crayford, Chris is facing up to the challenge ahead. This is a typical response to a long, thin garden, fences down the side, very nervous, narrow borders, with the plants all kind of lining up on the fence waiting to be shot. And, and that's pretty much, you know, what people do with their gardens. Creating a garden is like playing poker. You never reveal your hand all in one go, OK? You tempt, you tease, you twist, you manipulate people, and you try and kid people into thinking there's something exciting over here, OK? So at the moment, okay. if you stand here, your eye is drawn by the path, your eye goes straight down. Yes. If I put a feature over there, yeah. and then over there, and then over there, you've got three journeys, the garden feels that much bigger. Ooh, oh, you girls can see Water vole populations have been decimated by non-native predators like the American mink, and by the loss of their preferred habitat. Bessie, what do you think of this? This seems to be how the water voles like yes. it, because it can yes. keep them nice and hidden. Yeah. Well, it's rather wild, I must admit. <laughs> it's quite untidy, isn't it? Yes. It's really different oh. from what you've got at the moment, yes. isn't it? Because you're so neat, you're lovely and tidy, your yes. garden. But this is a bit of a mess. On the river bank, it'd be fine, I think, yeah. because it'd be near the river for them. It could have parts of it like this, couldn't yeah. we, right on the edge? Not up to the house, this. obviously. No. <laughs> Ah, Chris's plans extend far beyond the strip of land next to the river. With the exception of the bit by the back window, we're pretty much ripping everything out. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To be honest, if I was a bee, I'd just fly right on by. There's nothing here that's going to, going to draw you in. When we finished, then this will become a huge service station. Mr Beardshaw plans to make the garden appear bigger whilst adding trees and plants that will offer wildlife food and habitat all year round. But with one day down, he's got just three days left to do it. So that's what we're going to do. In theory... That looks great. The most important thing is we get the concrete out first. That's the... That's the it's, it's the soul-destroying job. The garden's got to go backwards before it goes forwards. So there's going to be devastation before we start to recreate. It's going to scare the pants off for 24 hours in, isn't it? Yes. Yes. She's going to think, what have you done? This time tomorrow... <laughs> this is normal with my clients. <laughs> this time tomorrow, they'll be saying, I wish I hadn't bothered. So as the first day draws to a close, Ellie reckons we can help one of Britain's rarest mammals, and Chris has a plan, albeit one which may give Betty a heart attack. Day two, and the garden crew go to work. Before the animals come in, the concrete's got to come out. And with just three days left, we have to get as much of the grey stuff out as we can in just one morning. Betty's lived in her home for nearly 50 years, during which the garden's never changed. But today, her crazy paving, her concrete paths and her narrow borders are gone forever. Oh, oh, sorry, Betty. They're digging it all up. It's terrible, isn't it, the state of it? But it will look nice, I'm sure. It will do. Yeah, yeah she doesn't sound overly convinced, does she? And in the garden under the concrete path, we've made a discovery. More concrete. Nice. All the way along. Don't worry you, but this goes all the way along. Any right. chance it's a main drain cover running off the road and into the river? I hope not. If it is, then we've got a bit of an issue. The Vickers, where they used to build the planes, is over there, so maybe there's an escape tunnel or something from over there, or, or, or an air raid shelter. Or it's the grave of King Arthur. He's a big chap, isn't he? He was a big lad, by all accounts. Maybe he was buried with his lance, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> or the horse. <laughs> 
Rather than a groundbreaking archaeological discovery, we have in fact uncovered another path. I'm sure that's just a path. But I think what we need to do is to get the spike in and just smack it to break it open. I'm not going to take it out because you only need, uh, for grass, which is going in this section, it's fortunately, grass, right? yeah. um, you only need uh, about 300 mil of uh, sort of foot depth of topsoil. And clearly, the lawn's been existing here anyway. Happy days. We've already lugged over 10 tonnes of concrete out of that garden. Mind you, it won't go to waste. This is a proper big boy's toy, this is. Come to grab all that concrete, take it away, where it'll be recycled. I didn't even know you could recycle concrete, but you can. In fact, some builds are now demanding recycle. This could turn up in the new Olympic Village, just up the road here. The grey stuff's no longer a problem for us, but out on the river, it is, where it's covering many of the banks. It's taking away the water vole's natural habitat. A lot of the gardens have just got <coughs> concrete or wood at the yeah. end there, so there's not really a lot of access for wildlife. Right. Coming up to yours now, Bess, you can see that although it's a oh, brilliant right. bank, there's just not a lot to eat for them, or not a lot for no. them to hide in. No, that's true, isn't it? So we'll have to make sure Chris puts a load of plants yes. in. Yes. Got a couple of reeds each. A couple side, of reeds, but yeah. It needs more along the front. Let's make it yeah. quite a bit thicker. Meanwhile, I've dropped in on the neighbours and found concrete isn't the only thing driving away the wildlife. So Look who we got here? This. this is Sooty, otherwise known as Bielzy Babe. Hello, Sooty. Because she's a killer cat. Is she? Sadly, yes. So, in, and, what, and what sort of things does she kill? Well, was many small birds, mice, teenage rat, which I found on my bedroom floor, which was the nastiest. Uh, wood pigeons, two more hens that she's managed to get into the cat flap and killed indoors. So she's a bit of a menace, really. Yeah. But she's lovely. I've tried bells and all that, so... Oh, you have tried putting a oh, bell yeah, on her to yeah. try... But and she, she gets still... it off. Gets oh, she off. gets the bell off, does she? Chews the whole thing off, yeah. So Look, here comes Ellie. Yeah. Marion. <laughs> and Nick. Oh, hello, Nick. Hi there. I've just found out there's a, there's a killer cat up here. Beelzy, baby. Oh. <laughs> what an appropriate name. It's a real sort of river community, this, isn't it? Mm. For a place where you wouldn't know there's a river out the back, everybody's really into it. You should have, like, a regatta like Henley. Well, we do. Actually. You do not? We do, we do. And we're having a meeting tonight. Am I the only one sensing a little eccentricity in Crayford? I have my concerns. Ellie's more worried about the mess upriver. Lots of plastic bags, bottles, toys, tyres, lots of that. So it's not... I mean, this bit's fairly clean, but the rest of it's not? Yeah, no, it's, it's not that it's filthy, but there's plenty of evidence. There's just tons of rubbish, really. So, apart from building a wildlife garden, we need to give the river a bit of a clean-up and find a way to stop the neighbourhood cat mowing through the local wildlife. She wants, to, she wants to stop the cat killing things, she just doesn't know how to. Not only can you put collars on, only some of which work, really. The, the bells are the better they ones. They tried that. They, they tried, tried the that. bell and the cat ripped the collar off. But what you can also do is make sure you feed it at about the same time each day. If you make it kind of early evening-ish, get them in for the night and keep them in at night, because at night's when the small mammals are coming out and early morning's when the birds are coming out, and that's just prime hunting time for cats. But cats love going out at night. Yeah, well, but they, they don't need to. If you, if you can have them out in the day, they actually don't need to. They, they get plenty of food, they don't need to go out hunting. Yes, whilst Ellie ponders putting every muggy in the country under catch curfew, I'm up the road at the regatta committee meeting. I have a feeling they're already three sheets to the wind. We've had an eight-foot-long remote-controlled alligator. We've had Sea France Ferry, which is not bad on a rowing boat, so it's that oh, sort of thing. Shit. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Does it, don't they all know that here? Yes. No. I know, we've got new residents. Oh, have you got new residents? Oh, yeah, have you just moved in? Yeah, yeah. October. Yeah. Stop interrupting yeah. at all, will you? <laughs> we always go along the whole stretch that we use, and if there's any nests there, there is a post put in with a big notice yeah. on it, Nest. Sue's homemade garlic dip. Sue's homemade garlic dip. That's very good. Yes. <laughs> Listen, a hard day in the garden has left me with an appetite, but I'm not here just for the food. Listen. I'm flipping it. Listen, I can't speak. Um, could I, could I call on the, reg the regatta committee to, <laughs> to throw together a small armada to come along and maybe go for a bit of a ri river clean-up all together? Would that would, something you could join in with? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. 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 No That's fantastic. <laughs> Let's celebrate and get stuck into the twiglets, shall we? <laughs> uh, cheers. All right. Oh, cheers. 
Well, I mean, that was an experience, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Nick. Cheers. How are we doing, chaps? Are we all right? It's chucking it down, but the boys will have to work into the night to get the pergola base levelled for the morning. Perhaps not the best time to tell Colin about the homemade garlic dip. It's late and it's raining. And you want to go home, don't you? We do want to go home, sir. We do. <laughs> Look, there's steam coming off him. Can you see that in the light? Look at that. Don't get too close. Don't get too close. <laughs> Make up. You want to get to Plastic surgeon, then. What do you think? Get out of it. <laughs> go on. I appreciate it, water bowl. <laughs> It's morning and we've only two days left in Betty's garden, but the boys' late night has paid off and they're putting the final touches to the pergola. Pergola, whatever. Just so I get this measurement right now and then we'll be off racing. Where's Nick this morning? I wish I was taller. You don't want to be taller. Petite is attractive. I'm escorting Betty around to her neighbours. Chris has big plans and I reckon it might be better to shield her from what's about to happen. Yeah. You're going to stay with Joyce? Yeah, I'll go in there. She looks a bit raunchy for me, Joyce, to be honest. <laughs> she is. Oh, no, see you later. Oh, he smells Take lovely care. today, Joyce. Do you want a kiss? Yeah, look. Oh, it, it smells gorgeous. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, ladies. Bye -bye. <clears throat> Don't look at me like that. Back at Betty's and the landscape team are in for a hard day, whilst their boss, Mick, tries to figure out where to put the holes for the trees. Only one man really knows what's about to hit us. The biggest tree we've got is a tonne and a half. That's about twice the weight of an average car. Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very big tree. That's How wide is it, the tree? Quite wide. What's the widest bit, the root ball or the...? I oh, know the root ball. The root ball itself is a metre and a half wide. <clears throat> and, and three feet deep. It definitely won't go around that corner, will it? And it's about seven metres high. And it's going to go straight through that pergola that's just been built. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Our cunning plan to use a big forklift truck to get the trees into the garden has hit a snag. The telescopic fork that is meant to drop them into place will have to go through some woodwork to do it. Someone better tell Mick. Well, We're going to get the, the front wheels of the vehicle to here. Yeah. OK, and then we've got a nine-metre reach, so it will reach to where you're excavating down there. We've got to get it on here, though, haven't we, because it's in the way. Well, it's only in the way if we don't take it down. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> can't we... Can't we, uh No. <laughs> just... Have you got a saw on it? <coughs> yeah, I have, but I'm, uh, having watched them spend all night in the rain last night putting it up, I'm loath to bring it over to you. Have you got a pencil? Have you got a...? Um, no. A writing stick? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey's desperate to save the wood from the trees. <laughs> See what I did? You can't lift them. But if I look, put the bucket against the, the other, the, the, you know, the bit on the front, yeah. we can drag it yeah. over to there, drop it in. OK. Um, it's much nicer than taking all that down. We can definitely drag a tonne and a half. Don't you damage my trees? <laughs> Can't see this. It. See what. See the difference is. Yeah. This is dead. <laughs> this is where it gets really. The tree's alive. <laughs> These are his babies. <laughs> It'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? Well, there's only one way to find out. So there you go. There it is. It's a very big lorry. Well, it's not all for us. It isn't. No, it's nearly all for us though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's, <laughs> there's a few little trees. Yeah. Just little ones. Holy uh, mackerel. A few little trees? <laughs> I'm beginning to suspect that Chris has bitten off more than we can chew. What do you think? It's an entire forest. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is a climate to go against the fence. Oh. You never get all that in one place. You didn't say you want any space left for Betty. You just said dense for wildlife. Is this why Betty's been <laughs> shipped off? She's got no idea. You want to do the big one around the other side? His plan seems to be to recreate the Amazon in Crayford. Look at the size of that. <laughs> Fair old way, isn't it? <laughs> you carrying it in? No, you can. I'll put it on your back. Thanks very much. <laughs> back at the garden, mutiny is in the air. 
can't stand it when they do this, and they get such a stupid fellow tree, such a tiny little girl. Yeah, it's ridiculous, Michael. Do tell so, them. I was just going to tell such them. A lot Have you of seen the trees? You know what's going to happen? We'll be spending all day. Them? there. Everybody's going to come off this. We're going to spend all day down there digging holes, uh, manoeuvring a tree that it's going to take eight of us to lift into position. Mm. <laughs> what? Oh God! Look at the size of that. Ah, it's better nice, you than me. Yeah, it's, it is enormous. This one is uh, hawthorn. It's an ornamental hawthorn. This is Crotegus lavellii. Very, very thorny and very, very heavy. I mean, why not just buy small plants, let them grow? Doesn't make good television, though, does it? Oh. This is actually a really small tree because in the days when um, Capability Brown was, was landscaping his gardens in the sort of 1750s, there are great reports of the fact that they had so many donkeys pulling it and the trees were so big that the branches were smashing the windows on either side of the streets of the villages they were going through. So, comparatively speaking, yeah, but in it's those quite days, small. you could upset the villagers because you were the lord of the manor. Here, <laughs> watch out, there's a tree coming. <laughs> Forget the villagers, here in Crayford, it's our landscape team that are up in arms. Ten and a half of thorns. It's all thorns, it's not even a nice plant. <laughs> Dig a hole. With Chris still determined to use the telescopic forklift, it seems the pergola's days are numbered. Or maybe not. Is there anything wider than the wheels on the, on the truck? No. I just wonder whether it might be an idea to put a tape measure across the wheels and find out whether it actually will go in. <laughs> that would be too elementary, wouldn't it, really? Don't you think? I think your axle's too wide. With the truck stuck in the front wall, it's time for plan B. With this telescopic, we'll be able to drop it right on those planks at the end, from here. Mick's happy his pergola might be safe after all, but capability beard shores showing signs of tree-related stress syndrome. Can I take a picture? Yeah. For the insurance. <laughs> <laughs> for the claim. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> exactly. That's it, it's going to have to be it. We're about halfway to the hole. Which is rather, rather disappointing, considering we were hoping that was going to drive it and just drop it in. Mick's got his way. All we can do now is drag the tree with a digger. It's good news for the pergola, but not for us. Are we really that bothered about squirrels? <laughs> oh. yeah, come on! Come on! Is he pulling you? <laughs> Close enough? That's right, fine. Just Watch it doesn't um, catch your eyes as it comes over, Nick. Okay, there it goes. Oh, yes. Ooh. Nearly. Well, it's not bad, is it? It's all right. Well, I'll just heal it in, it'll be fine. <laughs> Chris, he said, heal it in. <laughs> he really loves trees, doesn't he? Yeah, we do. <laughs> 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 <Nearly> there. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. So how many of these we've got to do? Thirteen. We get this one. Yeah. Only nine big ones. Oh, that, oh, well, that's okay then. Let's go, on, let's, let's go and get another one. You know, it was pure genius to pack Betty off to Joyce's. Thankfully, she's blissfully unaware of the forest wending its way to her garden, all for her precious birds. OK, so what's this one? This is a holly. This is... hasn't got prickles. No, it hasn't. This is one of the prickleless ones. This one's called J.C. Van Toll. And this one is going right in there, so it's going to bring the berries in, bring birds right against the kitchen window so Betty can watch the birds feasting on the berries. And he's not just a garden designer, you know. He tells fairy stories too. Want to hear one? Here we go. They believe that all the spirits from the landscape, from the trees and the shrubs and the woodland, all went into the holly during the winter. And then what they used to do, they hung little presents on the holly tree through the winter months as a reward for the evil spirits, to try and appease evil spirits, so they had a good growing season the next year. And that is why, at Christmas, you hang baubles and presents on a Christmas tree. Because until Prince Albert introduced the Christmas tree, it was the holly that we used to hang the presents on. And that's why the holly is such a special tree. Right. Well. Never, ever cut a holly tree down. And if you do, ask its permission first. Otherwise, Have you spoken to all the evil fairies will come out and they'll start pursuing <laughs> Have you. Have you had a word with this one? <laughs> Not yet. I love that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, round the bend on the riverbank, Ellie is with the regatta committee, who, true to their word, are helping us clear the rubbish. 
put that one in there. Fantastic. This is really bad news for wildlife, Betty. Yeah. Look at that. Look at the thing, well, oh, that's yeah. oh, dangerous. just terrible for small mammals. Mm -hmm. The thing about litter, really, is that animals don't see it as uh, litter. They just see it as a potential habitat. So in they it's go, right. maybe looking for food, and uh, mm. can easily get stuck. Some of it can only be reached from the water, so Ash, the river keeper, John and I set sail. Three men in a boat. The, the colours, the way it plays off the Stella can, just uh, next to it. <laughs> <laughs> A speaker, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a speaker. Here come the armada. Oh, yeah. It's an <laughs> armada. Afternoon, I think actually ahoy might be the correct <laughs> expression. Ahoy, ahoy. Have you started getting excited about litter yet? I have. I suddenly go, I'm, I'm starting to say, look, there's fantastic litter over there. Get over there. <laughs> Let's get over there. You're <laughs> such a good There's definitely a load of rubbish in it, and like there's an awful lot of, like, you know, uh, takeaway rubbish. <laughs> that's rat food, isn't that it? Is, that's prime rat food, really, because they're such opportunistic eaters. They'll go for anything. They'll even go for the pizza boxes, you know, so... Rubbish can be lethal to wildlife, and it can also attract brown rats, a real problem by the river, as they can quickly take over water vole habitat. Well, that's why we want to get rid of the rubbish, really, because the more rubbish, the more left-out food, the more rats we're going to attract, and we want water voles. Have you seen any wildlife this morning? Have not seen it? Only fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see how rude. Oh, that's There we go, there's a vole. We've got a vault. Ellie, can you see him? Here he comes, he's, he's in the gap here. If you watch carefully that area, he may come out again. Little blunt nose on him, little blunt stubby nose. That'll and... be the one. Ellie was right all along. There are voles in this river, and we are lucky enough to get a glimpse of this rare animal. Here he comes, here he comes. Here he is, he's down here again. See him? Oh, he's going out across water, look. Oh. <laughs> They're here. They're cool? really here. How cool is that? Aren't oh, they amazing? He's just trucking all the way down the side. And... Amazing swimmers, aren't they? Just yeah. casually on his way down the on his way down the bank. Is <laughs> that <laughs> so the water bowl dance? Is that, is that it? I don't know, I'm making I'll it up. Do it. That's right. <laughs> Armed with the knowledge that there is at least one water bowl and it's heading toward Betty's, we still have a lot to do before her garden will be water bowl paradise. Chris, Christopher, how are you doing? All right, I've why? I've got some amazing news. I, I don't like that look. Ah, no, I've got some amazing news. I've just seen my first wild water bowl over wow. there. What, were you doing the littering? Yeah, we were doing the littering. Fantastic. So it's all worth it. Very opportune moment. This is um, a malus. It's one of the ornamental malus. So it's going to produce the crab apples that the water voles are going to eat. Yeah. Now, we've got this, and we've also got a, a hazel. And what I need to know is which way around in the garden you'd like them, because this one, this is more ornamental, so my tendency wouldn't be to put it down on the riverbank, because it's a bit too ornamental in where I would normally plant native species. Right. But it is going to put the crab apples right down by the water. That would be my preference, because um, in autumn they'd eat the fruits and grasses and sedges throughout the rest of the year, but not really the nuts so much. So you'd rather so have that. To get it all down to where the waterfalls are going to be, I would have this one preferent, as a preference down there. OK, all right. Is that all right? Might need a lift. All right. <laughs> Wildlife and garden design working in perfect harmony. But it's not always the case. We've got that big concrete platform, mm. which I've only left there because it's, it's just deep, deep concrete and it's right. just too difficult to get rid of. Uh -huh. So I wanted to put, like, a timber platform on it. Decking. A decking, OK, a decking. The least wildlife-friendly surface well, that's, But that's the point, really. It's like, <laughs> what, what can I do to it that's going to no, make I it can... more wildlife-friendly? I mean, because yeah. it, it's going to be raised off the ground. So can we can we leave an opportunity for things like hedgehogs yeah. to get in? How big a hole does a hedgehog need? About that sort of size? Yeah, not big at all. 20 centimetres gets every single mammal through, including badgers, so... Right. So it's smaller than that. 20 centimetres? Yeah, that's what it is. We've got to scorch all down. Three, two, one, go. Mind your feet. Mind your feet. Yeah, I'm getting stuck in with the hydrangea. Do you need some help getting your feet out from under there? I'm fine, actually. I think I might just grow here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've just planted a knolls. So, so we'll as soon as, over the shed, then. as soon as it touches the shed, it's going to start sticking itself to the shed and then along the fence. But you can see the density of it. This is great for nesting birds. Blackbirds yeah. love it because they can get right in here and they can nest safe in all of this kind of congested stem and uh, they're surrounded by broad foliage. So I know that's, that one's going to be fine. Any evil spirits with this one? Uh, well, I could make a story up if you like. I'm you not, sitting comfortably? Not, not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not convinced you haven't so far already. <laughs> 
12 hours and 13 trees later, the garden is coming together, but it's another late night for the boys. It's a good delirious after one, not you? It's After the thorny issue of the trees, headman Mick seems to have been one round. I must say, because this uh, hawthorn here, I, I was very rude about it when you weren't there, because I don't... I really... Well, I'm not a great lover of thorns anyway, hawthorns at all, but it's lovely. Actually, it does look good. I'll give you that. See? It's hard, though, isn't it? See? He's a softy, fluffy gardener at heart, really. Yeah. Fluffy. With the boys back on side, that's it for today, but we're not out of the woods yet. As dawn breaks on our final day in Betty's garden, the trees have already attracted a few curious visitors. But it's not theirs yet. Morning. Big day today. Finish the decking and plant about 600 plants. No problem. No problem. <laughs> The plan is coming together, but before the planting can begin, we need to improve the ground. And that means wheeling in barrow after barrow of topsoil. Everyone can help out, including the wildlifers. You're a ferocious thing, Chris. Well, Stop. can you manage that? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't realize you were taking no that No bother. <laughs> you sure? No. Master or apprentice, everyone has to lend a hand. This one's a wonky one too, you know. What's amazing is not the wheelbarrow making that noise. Oh, I've never done this before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Takes double the effort with me involved. It, yeah, it works better on the wheel. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> It wasn't just me. It Game wasn't though, isn't she? Fair. It feels like we've moved a mountain, and to be honest, it's not what I signed up for. That'll do, I think. We're all feeling it. Well, almost all of us. I remember now what it is I don't like about gardening. The hard work. Yeah. My brother loves this kind of stuff. He's got an allotment. He, he loves nothing that, that, better than a day of digging. There is actually, there's no shortcut. He really can't. And this is, the, it makes the difference between plants that live and plants that die. You have to dig it over to full depth, incorporate all that organic matter, and then they sit and smile at you. Those plastic plants look really nice though, don't they? <laughs> that could be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving the master to carry on digging, Ellie and I steal a moment to appreciate how gardens can be a sanctuary for wildlife and people. Alike. I don't think there's enough places that you can sit on the end of a pier as an adult and swing your feet. It's at Betty's garden. Yeah. It's amazing that, that right in the middle of all this industry and housing estate and, you know, wildlife is surviving. That's the thing, isn't it? You give Mother Nature a little crack in the concrete and she'll find somewhere forcing her way through. Yeah. Nature's incredibly resilient. Some of our best wildlife habitat is along motorways. It's not broken up, it's all just a complete corridor. No one ever really goes on it, even when they break down. Mm. It's got good wildlife there, which is great. You excited about today? It's all yeah, coming together, I isn't am. it? Big day, 400 and something plants, 500 and something plants. I lost count in the end. Well, there's Chris, and here's us, not doing it. Yeah, no, listen, I offered, and I said, look, you, you know, if you'd like to place them and I'll plant them for you, he said, I don't think so. <laughs> I've selected hundreds of plants that will attract and feed our target birds and animals. Combined with the trees, these will ensure a plentiful supply of food all year round. And yes, even the water voles get their own riverside buffet. It's, a, it's Carex pendula, so it's one of the natives. I'm fairly certain, Chris, that I saw this, uh, this particular plant at that perfect water vole habitat where it took Betty. It's exactly what you were, what you were looking for. That's, yeah. they'll, they will graze those young shoots. And give us some fantastic cover for them, which yeah. they need. Yeah. Possibly the wrong time to tell him, but water voles eat about 80% of their body weight every day. Do the vole dance. That's, that's, yeah. Do the yeah, vole that's, dance. Yeah, that's I've seen right. no yeah, vole. Now pull that one. You only get a dance when you see a vole. That's it, put it where your right foot is. 
There you go, that's it. Right, okay, right, right, right. Now, Chris is far more interested in his plants than our vole dancing. <laughs> oh, dancing. OK. Before anything goes into the ground, Chris positions every plant, which takes a lot of concentration. But that won't stop me firing questions at him. So, at this stage, when you're setting everything out, what are you looking for? What, what, what are you seeing and so that you know where to put what? Um, the finished plant, actually. You picture it as it's drifted together, and what I'm going for is informal drift, so you can see that I'm intermingling. So, for instance, here, we've got one, two, three purple sedums in the middle yeah. of the bascom to break the bunch. So it's not just clump, clump, clump. It's little ribbons running through the landscape. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Can, can I, I help you carry something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought he made it up as he went along. To be honest, creating natural drifts of colour is still reliant on Chris telling me where to put the plants. Out a bit, towards you, towards you, towards you, back a bit. Th that way a bit. Brilliant. OK, and then you can start to introduce the next drift, so you're overlapping all the time. It's like the plants are falling over themselves. A bit like the people. But clearly some are trusted to do more than others. What can I walk on and what can't I walk on? Uh, you can walk on, on here. On the soil of there? Yeah, 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 it's fine. You shouted last time. No, if you want, just use the same footprints as you go in. OK. OK. What are you doing? I'm putting plants in. Oh, are you? Yeah. You've been allowed to put plants in I have. on your I've... own, are you? Oh, yes. And I'm walking on here. <laughs> <laughs> All of this area is damp shade, so you can, you're can. you using ferns, hellebores, um, you're using scrofularias. Um, I'll go and get you a scrofularia. OK. You didn't bring a scrofularia with you? I what, didn't what bring you my, thinking? my scrofularia all over with me today. <laughs> I'll remember it next time. <laughs> <laughs> How come you get to, pl to put plants down on your own? What are you doing? I'm being told exactly where to put them. <laughs> are you creating drifts? Yes. You don't even know what that means, yeah, do you? I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Chris, she's not creating drifts. I am. What, uh, you just placed them there temporarily, have you? <laughs> yes. Look, here's a, scroff <laughs> here's a scrofularia, figwort. Variegated plant, unusual for a variegated plant to go in the shade. Most, if you have a variegation, you're not as efficient because you can't manufacture as much chlorophyll. So you need the loads of light. So you need loads of light, except nature this... always throws in an anomaly, and this is the anomaly. This one loves the shade. So this mixed with your ferns. So what I want is three ferns spaced out in a triangle, and then an interlocking triangle of scrofularia. I see exactly what you okay, mean. So three, well. and then three overlapping. <laughs> of course, th that wouldn't have been variegated originally, would it? Because variegation is something that's been bred into it by people. No? Come yes. On, yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Except, <laughs> except sometimes nature does it for you and there are different forms of variegation. Yeah, but I won't bore you with it, um, but you're, you're kind of... You'd, you'd get half a cheese for that. Honestly, if you give him a little bit of information, he's dangerous. If you'd like to know more about the plants I've chosen to attract wildlife into Betty's garden, then go to our website. 4.30, so we've got an hour and a half. Um, as you can see, the light's going quite considerably now. It's behind the willow tree, but the plants, look at that. Look what a difference it's making already. So I'd say we were three quarters of the way there on the planting, and uh, ever seen a lawn laid in half an hour? And you're about to here. A close mown lawn may offer limited opportunities to wildlife, but this is a space for Betty to enjoy. Closer to the river, we've sown a wildflower meadow for butterflies and voles alike. We're running out of daylight, so it's all hands to the pumps to get the last of the plants in. Three whites and a pink. Putting the finishing touches on the decking includes making sure we leave the mammals a way to get in. And that's us done. I think it's beautiful, we think it's beautiful, but it's not our house, no, so... Isn't. I'll go and get Betty, you wait on down here. <laughs> too just, late now? I might just jump in the river, she doesn't like <laughs> it, honestly. It's just still too much. <laughs> oh, say. Oh, my goodness. Do you know, my heart's missing a beat. It really is. Oh, oh I want to cry. It's so gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Well, that's half the battle won. She loves it. But for us, the real challenge is attracting the wildlife, and that won't happen overnight. We're leaving Betty's garden to mature, but installing an array of motion-activated cameras 
to record wildlife activity over the summer. Four days ago, Betty's garden was nothing more than grass and concrete. There was no cover and nothing to attract animals in. Five months have passed and the transformation is incredible. Isn't it how it's all sort of sprung out and yeah. filled out? This is now a beautiful garden sanctuary for birds and bees. The whole space is buzzing with life. You had lots of butterflies, Betty? Butterflies, yeah. yeah. Some lovely coloured one, but three inches wide. And those little blue damsel flies. Damsel flies. Yes. Yeah. flies. So you had lots of bird action? Oh, lots of birds. Oh, They're flying in and out. It's wonderful. Betty's always wanted birds in her garden, and now they're here. All right, Betty, let's have a look at what came in. Oh, well, house sparrow, you don't yeah. see many of those. Not so many at all. Oh, green so finches lovely. here. And green and finches and are lovely. Well. Well, how amazing is this? Isn't it really good? Look at that. That is the oh, chaffinch, yeah, because it's got quite a red front. They're quite big, aren't they? Chaffinches will love the seeds in the, in the garden as yeah. well. This is just wonderful. Our garden birds need all the help we can give them. Fantastic to see them just like this close. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Quite a few of these green finches. Lovely. Oh, oh, that's a good that's one of the starling. The starling chasing me. He's looking at the camera. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> He's, They're very intelligent. The lens, oh, no, blue tit there. Yeah. That one's very inquisitive about yes. the camera. Blue tits are my favourites. They're gorgeous. Are you pleased with the variety of birds? I'm absolutely thrilled. I am. Beautiful. Down by the river, we put in food and cover, hoping to attract Britain's rarest mammal. And Betty's helped, offering extra treats. Betty, the bit I'm so desperate to hear about is, did you have any water voles? We did. I put apple and carrot out there most evenings. And this certain evening, about half past eight it was, he was eating the food and then he suddenly scuttled away. But then he came back again. Oh, yeah. That's just brilliant news. So, that's actually that's... quite amazing, really, when you think how endangered it is and how rare it mm. is. Absolutely. Yeah. We, in, in the whole time we were here, we got a glimpse of one way further up the yeah. river. So the fact that we've brought them down here, Betty, is just yes. brilliant oh. news. And here's one of Betty's water vaults, caught by an eagle-eyed cameraman. But it's not just these furry little mammals that are being drawn into the garden. How has it changed? your sort of life on a day-to-day -day basis. I spend too much time in the garden, Nick. <laughs> Nothing else gets done. But I come out every morning, first thing, make sure that the water voles have eaten their supper. I'd love to live out here, really. I think I'm put my bed in the shed, <laughs> so I'll be nearer. <laughs> <laughs> I've got your water voles. Water voles. I've got the birds. I've got butterflies. Yeah. It's not bad, is it? <laughs> no, really, it's what we set out to get in the first place. And it's and an attractive up. garden as well. Yes, yeah. Very nice. But what could you ask for? You let me plant something on the next one. Yeah, no. Uh. It's gone well, but not that well. 